The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is the 9 o'clock uh, show. Tommy O'Brien. I'm sitting in for Tommy. Uh, it's fine just to have to have an appointment, so I'm going to be sitting in here. I'll be doing the next two hours. This is going to be a really important closing week chart pattern, uh, and we'll go through all these things very slowly. The Dow futures right now, the YM futures, down almost 300 points at 38,380. So these are the patterns. <laughs> Let me just show you what I, I – well, I'll do this live. So the um, – Two core patterns right now that are very important. One is in the Chapman Wave methodology, over the decades, I've developed certain uh, techniques and certain patterns that I look at. One is right here, if I can just put it there. So this is a pattern where the, the price that you're following goes to a high and it starts to make lower lows and much, sorry, lower highs and much lower lows. Then it suddenly forms a base of support. And then it takes out that upper trend line, downtrend line, so like a declining cone. And it could do a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. And what does that do? The three patterns that I always look at, straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation, or a mix of one and two. Well, it means that in this pattern that I'm looking at, um, let me just do it over here. So what I'd said was that you can go from that pattern to that cup pattern. Well, lo and behold, that is the cup pattern. That is the arch pattern. We call this a dreaded H, lowercase h, because the price fails at a peak A or a B, takes out the left side low. In this case, it does exactly the opposite, takes out the high. So what are we looking at in this particular instance? We're looking at a trend line that says higher highs, higher lows. Oh, that's fine. That's over there. Um, there are your higher highs. Here are your higher lows. And then suddenly, what does it do? It takes out this left side. But lo and behold, you're looking at a pattern that is, in fact, I, I can show you this in, in a moment. In a moment's time, in the in one and five minute charts of the live e mini charts. Look at this. So there's a chance that you're f forming the dreaded H. Why do we call it the dreaded H? Because you know, decades ago, when I first came to um, TFNN, um, there, we were looking at, I believe it was ASA Gold. I think it was ASA Gold and South African Miner. And the monthly chart is making a D. Well, in the Chapwave in the Chapway methodology, the objective in any price movement is to get you to a starting point that gets an upgrade from a buy signal to a buy mode, the implication says it can go to four higher peaks. Four higher peaks is the objective of a buy signal upgrade to buy mode. At that peak D, the fourth highest peak, A, B, C, D, the four, fourth highest is D. Other things can happen. Have an instant restart, can start another, move all the way to the upside with another four peaks. It can have a, a sharp, you can see here, a sharp decline. That's not the point. The point that I'm making is, <clears throat> look, here's your peak D, and you came down sharply. There's the dreaded H. You've got a sharp move down. This is the YM chart, and now you're possibly making an arch formation. Now, you have to always talk to the market. You always have to say if. One of the reasons you say if is because you are not the market. You are only the um, the illustrator, the an analyst of what's happened historically up until that very moment, and then you try to project out using other techniques. But the history is, at this particular moment, it's a, a time point freeze, that is a, a, a momentary snapshot. And right now, uh, at minus 283, this is the pattern we've got. Now look at this, you've got here, I've got webinars on these, the pattern, the rectangle pattern, that you can sometimes have a single move up to the, to the to the previous high, especially if it's a D, E, or F. In this case, it's a D in the weekly chart. And lo and behold, that's where you start to draw in the potential for a very large arch formation. 
Same thing, dreaded H except it's a very large one. Sometimes it even makes a fractionally uh, new high. So what are we looking at? <clears throat> We're looking at the weekly chart, which could, in a large rectangle, make four higher peaks and then stop right at, right under or just above the previous high and then turn over and head towards the halfway mark. If it takes that out, that's negative. That's exactly what this has done. But in one move to the downside, we're arching over, but the nine period moving average is still green. That's why I'm saying this is going to be a very important weekly chart. Um, okay, so that's the Dow. So the Dow says, very negative. If we take out the low that was made, well, I usually do it on the price. I've got the closing price. Let's just do this. This is the closing price. If we take out 38,000, another technique that I developed uh, decades ago was the round numbers. So this is 38,000. Can you believe that the Dow went to 38,000.90, what was it, 38, 0.96. So it's basically 38,000 round number low, had a big spike up to the 39,100s, comes down, and now we're going to see what happens. Why? Because uh, this is pre-market. Now, sometimes what you do is you get the entire market having uh, a full, almost a full session between early morning and like, 8.30 when there's an economic news. Economic news didn't really do very much this morning. So I would say going into maybe, I usually say 10.20, but that's where the second part, maybe the second or even the third part of the session starts. I'm, gonna, I'm going to consider that this is all one move and that the move between the open at 9.30 and 10.20 this morning is just going to consolidate things. Is it? One of those sessions where we've really had the whole down day early in the morning and it's options expiration. And regardless of what's happening, we're going to have a sudden spike to the upside. Well, we don't know, right? But what I am looking at here is that um, looking at yes, nine. Is that a bad tick up there at 9.10? Oh, let me just check to see. There's a question in the den. A bad tick at 9.10? I don't have a bad tick. No, I don't have a bad take. Maybe, well, maybe it's your uh, software program. I don't have it. All right, I just have this 200-period exponential moving average acting like a magnet at 94.14. Uh, it turns out that the green nine-period moving average in the five-minute chart, remember, this is like a one-minute chart. It's like a daily. Five minutes is like a weekly, and 10 is like a monthly. So the middle chart, that's the middle term, uh, in this case, five minutes, is just holding green. Very, uh, really, uh, within a second, it could switch to uh, pink, meaning the nine goes under the 14. So Larry's doing his live show. I want to try to do some live stuff in the meantime, uh, but I just wanted to finish my, my analysis. So as it stands right now, let me just go through this again. The Dow is the weakest link. The Dow um, is 30 stocks, but they are really important. They cover the economy. They go from banking to building to uh, uh, to uh, we've, we've lost that one to high tech to um, insurance to defensive like Procter and Gamble. I mean, it's just everywhere. Okay, uh, food uh, Triple M. I mean, you're, Nike. I mean, come on, sportswear. All right. So as it stands right now, this tells us a lot about the economy. So I need to go through this now before we go to the next break. So let me just do this. So you've got the NQ. NQ right now is fairly weak. That's the um, NASDAQ futures. Just off the high, all-time high of yesterday. But here's the big clue. Bonds. Bonds are up a half a point. They are trying to break the intermediate term weekly downtrend inside track. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. And I'm sitting here for Tommy O'Brien. This is the Morning Market Kickoff uh, show. This is the hour. And I'm just so showing you here that up a half a point, the uh, bonds. Uh, the, so in the Chad Wave methodology, I have to uh, tell you that this cup formation says, yes, I've got a leg F, but I'm also calling an alternate count B. This could be a brand new move to the upside in bonds. So let me just hear what that little ping was. It's just fabulous to have that little reminder there. Let me go there. Give me a second. And I'm going to go to my engineer. we got Jose in Lakeland. Hi, how are you? Good morning, Basil. Uh, Basil, I could ask you a boring question of, you know, where's Microsoft going? But I don't want to ask a technical <laughs> question. I got a fundamental question for you. Uh, yes. You've got an election a few months away. I, I've if noticed. Biden, yep. If Biden wins... Uh, he would never step on the toes of the Federal Reserve Chairman, Mr. Powell, and his cohorts. He would let him do his job inflation-wise. If Trump comes in, uh, I see Trump threatening his job as he did during his four-year uh, reign of terror, 16 through 2020, uh, and installing his own guy, call him Larry Kudlow, whoever he was. Donald Trump will not put up with high interest rates. He will say, inflation be damned. Inflation be damned. I want rates back down to historic lows. What do you think? Okay, so let's just go through this one step at a time. First of all, 
you and I have probably followed the Federal Reserve forever. I mean, I, I, I can go back to when we were looking at M1 and then M2, that's money supply. And then I yeah. thought, well, surely they should be looking at M3. Eventually, somebody mentioned M3, but nobody mentioned it for more than, I think, a year. M3 came into fashion as something to look at. M3 is just the total money supply that flows in and out. So what we're looking at here is Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve, I, I happen to think that in certain respects, uh, in clarity, Powell is the first time we've had someone there that actually discusses uh, the economy and what the Fed is looking for quite cogently. I mean, it's the first time, we, I mean, with, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, why did I just forget his name? I can see him Paul picture. Volker, right. Greenspan? Greenspan. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was, you had to, you had to decipher the decipher. It was just impossible to understand what he was saying. You could have interpreted it anyway. So that's, okay. so I, I think in terms of uh, fluency, whether or not the Fed's going to do the right thing or not, we don't know. It's a really tough situation. I mean, look at this. The Dow is at um, uh, most recent lows, and the SMHs have made all-time highs. The S&P making all-times QQQs. This is a, a, a bifurcated market. It's a difficult market to assess in a very in very simple terms. And none of this, the the standard um, the standard uh, icons that we would look at are functioning the way they always do. The the VIX index has given us very little clues. The uh, the dollar and gold relationship they've they've not been the same as they used to be. When gold was going higher, dollar would go down. Now they're in their own little orbit. I mean, you can just go through all of them. Bonds the works. So what I wanted to say to you is, even with uh, even with uh, Trump yelling and screaming, in a sense, the Fed was still kind of doing what they had to do or what they felt they had to do. So I'm going to say to you, let's just watch it from the sidelines yeah. and, 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 and decipher I don't agree. it. I don't agree with what you just said. I think Trump put so much pressure on Powell. Powell was, has no backbone whatsoever. And... He should have been raising rates in 2018, uh, not so keeping them at so historic now, lows. And, uh, and um, yeah. Jose, if you remember, yeah. I don't know if you did, uh, were listening, I had said quite a number of years ago, I said, I don't understand this. It was so easy for the Fed to be normalizing rates, to have them go up because that was what demand was requiring. They could have just raised rates without anybody saying anything. The market would have ignored it because it would have been business as usual, historically Absolutely. business as usual. So you and I are on the same page. I'm just saying to you that, yes, there was that moment, um, but, I, 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 you know, we are just we are just passengers on this ship. We're just watching to see where, where the captain takes it. And I can just say to you that the market resolves it in its own way. So I'm not going to get flustered or caught up with this and say, what if, what if, what if, in, the, in the regard to the election and what happens afterwards. What I am going to say to you is what we've got to deal with is this summer. How we get through the next eight weeks, I'd say, is going to be really important because um, and I'll talk about that in, in my show because I'm doing uh, a full two hours today. So I've got another hour and a half to go. So what I'm going to say to you is, I, in a sense, you and I will be looking probably at the same thing. How the Fed responds, I think for them is going to be um, on a tactical level. You can see yields have come down over the last short period. Let me just show you this right now. In fact, you came in just as I was talking about yields. And yields, are they're really caught to everything that we're talking about because uh, what the yields do from now on is going to, in in essence, impact the market. I'd say 55 to 60 percent of the market could be impacted uh, if rates really go back to very high levels. Uh, just as over the last week or so, if they start to go back, yields start to go much higher. That's going to impact the whole area of the um, builders, the home builders, etc., and the building supply. So let me just show you something here. I don't know if you can see my chart. The middle chart, I'm opening it up now so you can see it. 
there have been lower lows and lower highs. And if you're looking at it, what I'd said to subscribers for a long time is yields are just stuck in a range. They're stuck in the higher range. At some point when the, market, the economy starts to soften, normally you would see yields go down. So the other pressures that come, can come about, but just the normalcy of markets says that when uh, demand slows down for, uh, for loans, the yields kind of soften. When, normally, when loans are, are really in tremendous demand, yields should have gone up. And I'm with you. I, I think yields should have been much higher and normalized at, you know, quite a, quite a bit higher, at least, um, at least historically. So now what I'm going to say to you is this. If you want to look at the uh, yields until the bonds, so this is the bond itself, 120 and 830 seconds right now, up 13 seconds. If the bonds start to hit the 200 period moving average of 133, so that's way off. I mean, we're at 120. That's 10 points. It can do that. It can do that fairly quickly, but it hasn't done it for a while. That's where I think it's going to make a big difference to the general stock market. That's regardless of what happens. But as far as the next president is concerned, you know, it's going to be business as usual. There'll be pressure if it's if it's uh, Trump and if it's Biden, there won't be that kind of pressure. Thanks for calling, Jose. Okay, thank you. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. Basil Chapman. This is 9.30 on Friday, the 14th of June. I'm sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. So we had a very sharp sell-off early on. 
And I'm just wondering if we haven't seen this first part of the session actually like one day's worth and now we get some kind of stabilization and then at 10.20 this morning, we start to see something else. So let's just do this. I've got gold right here. Gold is um, trading uh, up 23. Let me show you in the Chapway methodology, always looking for a peak D or E or F and that's where you can get a turnaround. So we've had two peak Ds, actually three from the low that was made much earlier on in gold. And this is the third peak E, and it's pulled back, and it's about to go into a, and the 10-minute chart. If the pink 9 period moving average crosses negative, it'll go to a cell signal upgrade to a cell mode. This is the 10-minute chart only. If you're looking at the 5-minute chart, that's already in the cell mode, and the 1-minute chart. So now we're down at 23. If you're looking at the ESM, that's the E-mini. Now, Larry's doing his live uh Live show right now. I'm just wondering where he'd be, what he'd be looking at. I think I think he might uh, have some beautiful uh, positions to put on today because of the measured move that he'd be looking at. So you've got the E mini 10 minute chart and leg C. You've already got a leg E in the uh, right here in the five minute chart. The 200 period moving average is 54.26, and we're at 54.18. That's a long way to go. If you're looking at the the one minute chart, I was about to say the daily because I think of the one five and ten as if it was the daily weekly. I was talking with to um, uh, Jose in Lakeland just a, a few moments ago. We'll go back to bonds in a moment. Uh, most importantly, the bonds are saying that there is some kind of slowdown. Now I need to. I want to just a couple of minutes to go to get all these out the way. So we've already got a peak D in the one minute chart of the E mini. Nice. The 9P moving average is over the 14. How long does that last? We'll see. So that's an up arrow, meaning it's a buy signal going to buy mode. Here we go. Okay. Now I can go to the rest. So I wanted to show you this because I need just a couple of minutes here to go. So we had Broadcom, AVGO. Uh, Broadcom announced fabulous earnings. And um, a 10 for 1 split, just like this is going to be the new thing is the splitting. I think that's really important. That's part of what I call the coda phase, uh, meaning that at some point in the 2024, there'll be more and more splits. There'll be a lot we'll be talking about. Already Oklahoma City is going to be building the world, the United States' tallest uh, building. This is all part of things that I look for as coda phases. doesn't mean to say it's the end of the world. It just means that we might be coming up to a really serious uh, pull back in the next six months, maybe a year, I don't know, but we're looking at it carefully. So that's uh, trading up 5.88. It hasn't made a new high. I'm expecting that there's a chance that it could make a new high. Let's look at the SPY because the SPY made a peak C. Um, it's just pulled back a little bit of $1.46. There's a chance that we could try for a peak C1, C2 that acts like a D, or we could even go to a D, but we haven't actually got anything yet to say, whoa, ho, 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 this is going to be the major sell signal. Now, we've become quite cautious. We've been, let me just do this right now, just so that you can, I can put things apples, apples. So the Dow's been the weakest link. The Dow's only down 143. I say only now because this is a work in progress. Um, this rolling over, I spoke about the dreaded H, the arch formation. Um, most importantly, what I am looking at here is that um, you, you, you can't have the general, general or generals leading when the, the soldiers are, uh, are failing. But you can't have the generals failing when the uh, soldiers are leading because they can't go on for that long. So in this particular case, look at this. We've got the SMH. Semiconductor index uh, making a new high yesterday, all time high yesterday of 266.78. I don't remember, I forgot to type it in. 260, 268.14. I knew there was an 8 there, so that's an 8.14. 8.14. And um, holding very nicely, it's just down $1.36. Um, I had no intention today of going into the, the short side of the semis because they this is a work in progress. I do believe it's going to roll over, but it hasn't done so yet. Um, at the same time, if you're looking at the technicals, look, fabulous technicals daily. On balance volumes, warning, things are not so great. Um, the weekly chart, all the technicals are good. And the monthly chart, all the technicals are good. So this is what I wanted to talk about. Maybe I'll do it in my show at 10 o'clock. I'll, I'll just start the, start the discussion now. For the, for the 
if I'm looking at the Dow and the Russell 2000, the IWM, whoops, the IWM, which is trading at this particular point, it had a lousy session yesterday. So IWM uh, has gapped down 2.17 at 199.78, way back into the uh, inside track. This is the down channel going for the inside track propellant line right here. We haven't got there yet, we're very close. And that's going to be the cushion. So if at any point in the next week there's a close under 196, that says you've broken all the key support levels and you've arched over. You've got to watch this very closely. All right, I've got that out the way. And I want you to talk about the QQQ. QQQ holding very nicely down just 13 cents at 476.64. Now, the most important aspect that I'm looking at uh, at this particular point is this. Uh, within the context of um, the tech sector, look, here's the XLK. The XLK, really strong move to the upside. Uh, I'm looking at this and saying, is that an F or is that a brand new B? And it's a big difference. An F says, oh, you got to be careful here on the Chapman wave. And the B says, are you kidding? You want to buy every dip because it's going higher. So I'm just putting it in here, and I'll talk about it uh, in terms of what ifs. So the weekly chart to me, even though this is a G, it's really a G stash B. And the reason why I've done that analysis is because the low that was made in the XLK, there's the SB Sp Tech Spider Fund, the low that was made in April almost like a double bottom, 192.04, the week of the 19th of April, and 192.08, four cents higher, the week of the 26th of April, and then it took off. But you see the ictus, you see this V-shaped turnaround in the stochastic, you see the unbalanced volume was still holding really well. You see that the MACD pulled back and then crossed positive. You see the nine-period moving average on that sharp pullback never even considered going pink, it stayed green. That is really positive. So it's just telling me that there's a really good chance that any serious digestive phase that we're looking at going into the end of June, maybe even the first couple of weeks of July, it says to me, there's a good chance that we just don't take out the 192 area in the XLK. So let's try to extrapolate that. In the QQQ, it would imply that we don't take out the 413.07 low of the 19th of April. Here we are at 476. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm not the market. I'm only doing an analysis. And it says to get that nine period moving average pink, you'd have to see four, oh man, 432 or four below 432. Well, what's going to do that in a short, short period of time? Just a series of bad news. I, I'm thinking this is a work in progress. Now, that takes me to how spectacular 2024 be, either on the upside or the downside. I'll talk about that when we chat. I also want to look at the grains. I had a request for that. I'll be right back. Puzzle Chap is sitting for Tommy O'Brien. Uh, Dow's down 100 and... Uh... Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, we're back. Basel Chapter Dallas down 126, SP's down 12. Not bad action at all. It was way worse earlier on. But this is what I'm saying, that this is a work in progress that you can't... Uh, is it going to be a situation where the Dow has, a, and uh, IWM, the Russell 2000, has a very percentage-wise and time-wise quite a bit of a, a pullback here, uh, but the uh, the leadership turns around to be continue to be the tech sector, and the tech sector then allows the uh, Dow and the Russell to digest the gains, and then the tech sector slows down the upside movement. It doesn't stop altogether, it just slows it down while the others play catch up. I think it's the other way around just for the shorter term. So let me just go through this. So just based on technicals alone, Larry's doing his live show right now, but I just wanted to show you this is live. Look, here's gold. And one of the things I said to subscribers is I'm watching gold closely because if the XLF, the financials, start to deteriorate, gold money will go into gold because money goes into gold when there's a, a financial crisis doesn't have to be a crisis. I'm just saying if there is a sense that there's a starting to be some failures in the whole banking sector, that includes the KRE, that's the uh, um, the regional banks, smaller banks, right? Not that they're so small. Uh, money will go into gold. And as a result, the whole relationship between the dollar and gold could dissipate as, a, as, a, as it has most of the year. So look at this. You've got that, that sell signal. Uh, that went to sell mode in the five-minute chart in gold, and now the green period, uh, nine period moving average is pink, but the the 10-minute chart stays green. It hasn't gone pink at all. So I just want to point out some things realistically. Look what's happened here with the E-mini. E-mini had a big spike to the upside, went to a peak F just a few moments ago. Nine is way over the 40, but it is pulling back a little bit. Where did it go to? It went straight to the five minute, and I meant to mention, maybe I did. I was going to, yes, I did. I mentioned that the five, uh, 3426 level is the um, 200 period moving average in the five minute chart. And look, there it is. It went right there. It hadn't been there until since this morning, uh, 3, 3 a.m. Eastern time. And since then, that it was up at 3432. Since then, it's plummeted to a low of 5397.75 in the e mini, and now it's come back and it's stalling right here. So, these are all key icons that I like to use. So, now let me go back to the story. Uh, I, I, I need to finish up just an overview. So, the QQQ is now up 34 cents. This is uh, this is showing uh, 
uh, internal strength still. The SMH is probably now positive something. Yeah, no, they're not. They're down to eighty seven at two uh, two sixty five. The um, let me just do this. The S and P. I think I did the E mini, but let's just go to the S and P. There we go. S and P right now is trading um, down just a, a little bit. It's down thirteen at fifty four twenty. So yeah, it's starting to move down a little bit, but the day is young. I can see that because, especially with options expiration, I can see buying flurries coming. I think a chunk of the selling pressure for this first part of the day, and including early morning, has been done. And I think there'll be buying pressure, little waves that keep coming in. That's number number one. Now number two is looking at now. And let me do gold again. Gold is down twenty nine. Uh, sorry, up 29. Where is it? It's stalling right at the 14 period exponential moving average, the black 14 daily, nine green, the pink nine period moving average says, huh, the selling, I've been talking about this for two weeks now, I said the selling pressure based on the nine period moving average is going to continue even when there was that big spike, look at that big turn down, I think it was Friday a week ago, it was down 60 or 70. So this is going to be very important. But look at the weekly chart, it says, what are you worrying about? But I'm gold. I'm holding gold on hold, and that's uh, nine way over the 14. So that's what I'm saying. So now let me go. I spoke about the XLF. Well, lo and behold, the XLF is down 20 cents at 40.59. It's not a big deal, but it has arched over. And uh, we're watching this because the nine period moving average within this rectangle is still good. But look at KRE. This is the regional bank index down 46 cents at 46.25. I drew this in. I said there's a left side, right side price time match that should take us to today or Monday, and it should take us to the low that was made at 45.45 on the 16th of April. Well, uh, we, we, we went very close four sessions ago. We went to the 45s, but we had a big bounce to the 200 period moving average in the daily chart, and now it's pulled back. So I'm just watching this very closely. And the weekly chart says, wow, it looks ugly, but actually it's only stuck in a rectangle, the lowercase h that's going to a lowercase m. If it, at any point the KRE, the S&P Regional Banking ETF, actually takes out the 44 support, I think I'm going to say I'll be watching gold very closely at that point because – it might come back. So the silver is up um, 20 cents at 29.27, right in the Chapman Wave inside track propellant support zone. So that's good, but that pink nine period moving average is nah, it's losing daily uh, strength. But look at the weekly chart peak E and MACD's goods, the Castics just under 80% at 74. On balance volumes pulled back, yet the price is holding. Way above the, the green nine period moving average, which is way above the black 14 period moving average. So, silver's doing well. High grade copper was pulling back the other day. It's down a little bit today, down 0.06 at 4.47. Uh, it's just kind of sitting there. Look at this peak D. I, I have to wait for the end of the day. I, I'm very close to putting a down arrow for a sell signal. It hasn't got to a sell mode yet. That means it goes under. The green goes under the 14. It's going to take a lot. High grade copper would have to go to 421. 4.21 uh, before the nine period moving average to get close to turning negative. Let's look at crude oil. Crude oil. Crude oil trading right now up. Oh, up 37 cents to 78, uh, 79. I'm talking about the nine period moving average just yesterday flipping positive and today again. And look, here's the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. So crude oil, don't rule it out. Crude oil is holding very nicely. It's not doing great. But it's holding well. So now I just need to finish up with the TLT. Uh, the TLT, very strong move. It went from the inside track repellent zone down channel to move up. So that's just saying yields, yep, they're coming down. Are they coming down because there's going to be a decrease in uh, economic activity? Mm -hmm. Well, here it is. I had already put this in the TLT. I said, I think I've got an alternate count. I'm leaning towards a B right now. I'm still leaning towards a B. In fact, I'm going to put an up arrow and I'm going to say, looks to me like yields can go high, uh, yields can go lower as the TLT goes higher. TBT is probably breaking the bottom part. Yep, there it is. Leg F to the downside could be an alternate count, F slash B to the downside. And it's broken the up channel. And what it says, I'm not going to talk about the 200 period moving average in the uh, weekly chart of 29.61, 81, until 
um, the TBT Ultra Short Lehman 20 year Treasury T bond ETF, which is really like the yield, actually closes under 31.50. If it does 3.150, or let's call it 3.150, if it closes under that, I think we can start looking at the left side low of the 29th of December, which is at 29.22. And 29.51 is the 200 period exponential moving average. In my show, if I have time, I'll do a left side, right side price time match and say, when could that happen? All right, so we've got a break coming up. Dow's down 230, uh, SDB's down 14. And uh, we'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So let me just do this because I'm, I'm sure to run out of time. I'm going to be doing my show coming up, the Tiger Technicians Hour. So I've got questions. I'll do, I'll do Amazon. I'll be doing a lot more uh, Salesforce.com. I'll be doing Builder, BLDR. Um, let me just put that down. Yeah, I'm going to be doing just a chunk. I'm going to be doing the grains come, come the next hour. But in the meantime, I want you to just prepare for what I'm anticipating uh, today. And it's very important to have patience in this business right now. So on the uh, short side, let me just get this down here. Right. So the Dow is the weakest link. Well, the IWM actually is very weak. This Russell 2000. It's also the Russell micro caps. All right. What we're looking at here is what are we looking for? 
we're looking for the chance that early next week, the 38,000 round number that we were looking at as, as a springboard to the, just a bounce on the upside is going to be tested. If at any point in the next week, there's a, there's a daily close under uh, 37,611. I'm just, I'm, I'm extrapolating. I'm just putting it out there. That's the low that was made back in April. A close below that changes the whole thing about trading in a rectangle, long rectangle formation, making a W or an arch formation uh, because you've broken a boundary. And that's going to be important. In the S&P, SPX.X, and I'm doing this because it goes to this goes for the weekend. I've got a, P a peak C. There's no other way that I can really count it. So I suspect that we might go a little bit higher. We don't have to go to the um, S&P high that was made at uh, 54.47.25. We can go just under it, get a peak C1 and then a C2. Or it can go higher. It could go to a leg D. But this is where I'm starting to uh, suspect that if there's going to be weakness, it's going to come from external, not just the market that we're looking at. It's going to be it's going to be sudden thing with the yields. It's going to be sudden thing with um, the humbled, whatever it is. There's going to be some. It has to be a surprise because technically, I don't see anything really that says there should be a huge sell-off at this particular point to get the nine-period moving average in the S and P. To go negative, you're going to have to see 53,010. So this is go one step at a time, and you will need the SMHs to really tank, and they're down to 69 cents right now. So it's a work in progress, but we've got a, a, a link, a chink in the link, and that says the down the, and the small caps are telling us that not everything is right, and that should fit into the other area.